This episode of the Brilliance Plus Passion Podcast is brought to you by the Podcast Reach System. Are you ready to exponentially reach more profitable customers? Launching and hosting your own show is your proven best solution for networking, client attraction, and establishing your celebrity expert brand. Visit www.podcastreachsystem.com and claim your rightful place as the leading star of your industry so you make a difference for your community, market, and audience. Welcome to the Brilliance Plus Passion Podcast. Join us as we celebrate entrepreneurs, business creators, and brilliant minds who reveal what they are doing to make the world a better place by being part of it. Be sure to visit our website at www.brilliancepluspassion.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now sit back, lean in, tune in, get your notepad and two pens ready, and let's get started. My name is Adam Homey. I am your host, and I am honored by your wise decision to tune in and invest in yourself today. I'm here with our co-host, Princess Alessandra Francesca. There you go. She is going to be a very avid participant in our conversation today. And like all of our conversations, it's about people who make the world a better place by being a part of it and by their contributions to it. And the gentleman we're speaking with now is somebody who I've known personally for about three or four years and has struck me by his own focus on improvement and all the many, many multifaceted things that he does. His name is Lauren Roberts. He's an award-winning filmmaker and brand builder. He has a very extensive bio, but I'm going to tell you just a little bit about it. He's a director of photography on the Day the World series stopped and Purple State of Mind, an associate producer for the feature film Not That Funny with Tony, Hay- with Tony Hale and Bridget Branagh. Lauren Roberts' decade-long collaboration with director Laura Lee Farrer, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, includes the award-winning documentaries The Fair Trade from 2008 and Laundry and Tosca from 2005. His current short documentary on Filipino muralist Eliseo Art Silva, and I'm probably butchering that pronunciation too, is receiving accolades everywhere it is shown. When he isn't filming, Lauren trains companies, large and small, to leverage multiple channels of marketing to accomplish their mission. Oh, all right. <laughs> Lauren, come on in. Welcome aboard. Great to, great to see you. And you can take me behind the woodshed on that one later. I was not expecting so many challenges to my list of <laughs> Thank you, Adam. Oh, my gosh. It's so good to be here. Thanks. Yeah. Well, uh, your bio is so impressive. I'm not sure I'm worthy to be here, and this is my show. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to dive right in. Our listeners know we have a 10-question format that starts with uh, learning about what it is that Lauren does, and then we're going to discover more about Lauren as an individual. So uh, I read off all that stuff, and so we're probably going to do just questions 1 through 10 And we kind of covered number two already. So let's just really dive into number one. How does the work that you do, in your own words, make the world a better place for your clients, customers, and the world at large? Wow. I I just love that you lead off with this question, though. Uh, Well, you know I'm a movie movie buff, so I'm going to quote from a movie. Do you remember uh, Joe versus the Volcano from the 90s? Meg Ryan, Tom Hanks? Okay. Oh, yeah. They're sitting, uh, they're laying, I think, on a raft out in the middle of the ocean, stranded. And Meg Ryan's character turns to Tom Hanks' character and says, My father says almost everyone, almost the whole world is asleep. Everybody you know, everybody you see, everybody you talk to. He says only a few people are awake. And they live in a state of constant, total amazement. So... I want to wake people up. Really, that's that's all I want to do for clients, customers, the whole world. I want to wake people up and I want them to be in that state of amazement because far too many people really are asleep. So yeah. that's that's my answer for that. It's simple, but it's, right. it's powerful. 
All right, so in your experience, what are a few of the most common questions, like the FAQs, that people in general will share when they're asking you about what you do, like, uh, and making their decisions that they may want to work with you? Well, okay, so I, I like you said in, in, in the intro, I'm a filmmaker, but I'm also, my clients are mostly marketing clients, right? So yeah. they come to me with marketing questions, and I'm not... I don't love all the marketing questions like, why does it cost so much to do marketing right? Well, (laughs) you know, I don't know. I don't think that's a good question right off the bat, right? Because you don't know how much it's going to cost. And and I mean, you and I have talked about things like repurposing content and stuff like that that really don't cost that much. So that's my first question. The second one I'm, I'm okay with, it's how can I get my story out there? And really, we don't, we live in such an amazing time for getting story out, right? I mean, you've got social media, you've got YouTube, you've got all these, a, a plethora of ways to get your story out there. So I, I'm, I'm okay with that question. Uh, the third question is, and you, you mentioned it in the bio, why do you do so many things? Well, <laughs> I'm kind of a polymath. <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I actually find that doing all of these things, marketing, art direction, graphic design, event production. Uh, I, I was a keyboardist and a vocalist in the Doobie Brothers tribute band for a while. Um, I find that all of those things actually inform the others. So I, I, I think I bring more value to my clients by doing so many crazy things. So those, those are the three questions I think that come up with pe- that people ask me right off the bat. Absolutely. So what are a few questions you wish people would ask? (laughs) Um, Well, I would say the first one really would be what makes a compelling marketing story? Uh, You've heard of TED Talks, right? So there's this guy, uh, Carmine Gallo, uh, who wrote a book called Talk Like TED. And he analyzed hundreds of these TED Talks and came up with really three buckets that, uh, of, of traits, of characteristics that you have to have to make a story compelling. And uh, it starts with, it has to, the story has to be emotional. There has to be an emotional component to it, right? Uh, the next bucket or trait was there has to be something novel about it. It can't just be the same old, same old. Uh, and then the third one is that it has to be memorable. You can't walk away from the story and just forget about the story entirely right there. So I, I would say that's a great question. What makes a compelling marketing story, right? And I just I, I go by that book. Uh, Talk Like Ted is fantastic if you, if you want to learn how to tell stories. I, I think the second question is... Um, kind of a twist on uh, one of those questions from, from your previous uh, thing was, how can I leverage what I already have to create great content or great marketing? Uh, I had a client a couple of years back and we filmed, we spent two days filming uh, a ton, he was a psychologist, sorry. And uh, he, yeah. uh, we, we filmed these like 15 to 20 minute deep dives into psychological topics. And he was gonna post those on his YouTube channel. And they really got no traction whatsoever, but who's gonna watch a 15 yeah. to 20 minute deep dive, right? What we realized though, was we could take, we could tease out two to three minute bits out of those videos. And we started posting them on social and we, posted some of those shorter ones on YouTube as well. All of a sudden, tons of traction because we were able to leverage what he had already created, repurpose it, and have something that really, really worked. So uh, that's that would be, be question two. Question three, dude, how can I connect? And this is this is a big question with marketing. And I think there's there's I think the pandemic showed us a little bit of the lack of relationship truly destroys marketing relationships. It destroys relationships, but I, I'm, I'm saying bring back those relationships, figure out a way, be it through humor, be it through shared experiences, whatever. Um, I was just on a, a, a photo shoot last week and we were shooting a fly fisherman in the middle of the Boise River up in Boise, Idaho. And, uh, and he says, I want to tell you a joke. And his wife's like, no, 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 don't tell jokes, don't tell jokes. And he's like, no, what smells like worms and bubbles in the water? And we're like, uh, I don't know. And he's like, fish farts. 
his, his wife is aghast, but, but we laughed. We had a great time with him. And all of a sudden, there's that relationship between him and us, the photo team. And we had a great day. We went back to their home after the photo shoot. And, and it, the relationship actually made that photo shoot that much better. So that, yeah. would, the, that would be the third question. How can I connect? Humor, shared experiences, whatever it is, figure out a way to connect, be it with clients, customers, whatever. Absolutely. So now we're going to shift gears and we're going to find out a little bit that will help our listeners get to know you better as an individual. So first of all, Lauren, what would people who know you be surprised to learn about you? That's a fun one. Um, I try and be an open book, but uh, this was long enough ago that most people who know me now don't don't know this, except for my wife. When we graduated from college, I got married right after I graduated from college, yeah. and we totally got burnt out on learning, which uh -huh. is weird, you know. But I no, actually, you and I have talked about this. You know, the educational system sometimes isn't perfect for everybody. And, and there's, right. there, there's some tweaking that really should change about the educational system. But we were burned out enough uh, that we did no book reading. And you can see all the books behind me. Uh, we are avid readers. Yeah. No book reading, no learning whatsoever. But coming out of that burnout, there was a, a new love of learning. We, we, we decided to become lifelong learners. And so now my wife and I both have multiple books on our bedside tables. We, we're avid readers. We're avid. Like we, we just want to drink in as much of life as humanly possible. So that would be one thing I don't think most people know about me. The other one is it's kind of interesting and I do not want to minimize, um, uh, mental health issues at all, but there's a little bit of an autistic streak in my family. And, uh, I yeah. used to think that of that as a liability and I no longer think of it as a liability. I know, like I said, I do not want to minimize it, but I, uh, I feel that it has been a strength of my experience to be able to look at the world in just a little bit different way than most people do. And uh, it has required me to uh, work just a little bit hard at relationships like we were talking about. Uh, it's required me just to, to be more open to the world out, outside, of, outside of my mind and make that intentional, you know, to be intentional about opening myself up. So I think those are the two things that I would say are something people would not know about me, uh, even if they've known me for a good long time. Yeah, what do you? What would you like people to say about you when you're not around to hear it? <laughs> um, I hope the words generosity of spirit are somewhere in there. Honestly, uh, I I, I want to be known as somebody who drinks life in deeply, drinks relationships in deeply. Um, that I love both my work and the people that I work with. Um, yeah, I think. I think those those types of things. Absolutely. So if you could go back in time and change one thing you've done, one thing you've experienced, one thing that's happened, what would it be and why? And this is something I tell anybody that comes to me for mentoring advice or anything like that when they're starting a business. In the first decade of me being in business, I was undercharging like crazy. I was worth way more <laughs> than what I was than what I was charging my clients. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I think you you know that yeah. There's a part of your brain that that knows that. But it took a long time for me to get to the point where I would actually charge what I knew I was worth. And I'm happier. My clients are happier. And we're just we're creating more magic now than ever before when I figured out that I really could charge what I was worth. Right. All right. So if you had the opportunity to meet somebody, what famous person alive or dead would you like to meet? And what question would you have for them if you had this opportunity? Yeah, that's a fun one. Um, I couldn't think of just one person, but here's here's what I'm thinking. My my interest lies in how people affirm life under pressure, under extreme pressure, right? So the, 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 the names that come to mind might be a Nelson Mandela, a Martin Luther King Jr., even a Dietrich Bonhoeffer, all three of those people. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was in prison in Germany for, uh, during the Second World War for protesting uh, 
the Third Reich. And yeah. um, I, I, all of those people wrote intensely life-affirming things from their jail cells. And that, to me, I, I would love to just get into their minds a little bit and see how they can, under such extreme pressure as being in a jail cell, you know, losing, well, Dietrich Bonhoeffer lost his life before the end of the war. Um, but how do you write and how do you communicate such life-affirming things to the outside world through your writing in such a in such a deep dark time as that so i i think that's those are the types of people that i would really like to talk with right right uh i mean i totally understand uh it's i've i've heard that some of the best writers did some of their best writing when they were in those types of circumstances. Maybe Absolutely. There's something, maybe there's something liberating about that situation. What I mean by that is obviously being in prison is not liberating in itself at all. But having yeah. Yeah. a lot of the day-to-day -day concerns removed from you frees your mind. I think that's absolutely true. But then there's got to be... I, specu I speculate there's been something to that for a while. Yeah, now. yeah. There's, but on top of that, though, there's got to be that... How, how do we get past the I'm, I'm, I'm stuck here to there is a wonderful life for people out there. You know, it, that, that's, that's, that feels to me like it's the, the, the missing link. You know, I, yeah, I, I do agree. Actually, I've had many times where if I focus, if I'm like stuck in a place and like I don't have my computer in front of me, I can actually write a lot better. That's that's very true. But that yeah. life affirming part, that's that's the the really interesting thing to me. You know, how do you, how do you inspire people like that? That's fantastic. Yeah. So in general, in general, um, what motivates and inspires you to keep going when you're having a tough time or facing a challenge? Look, I, I think you got to love the people that you work with, the people that you're around, both both on and off the clock, you know. Um, I, I love what I do. I love my work. I love all the things that I do. But more than that, more importantly than that, I mean, I'm on airplanes with clients for hours, you know, and it actually takes – uh, you know, I actually need to like them, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, I, I think really loving people around you is what is going to motivate and inspire me, even in those dark, even in those times when, when things aren't going exactly right or you're facing that challenge. Um, relationships, love, uh -huh. dude. Yeah, and what I'm hearing is just optimizing the relationships and optimizing yeah. the people yeah. around you. Uh, I mean, this is a topic of possibly several separate conversations, but I've said for a long mm. time, family is family is what you make of it. It's not necessarily dictated Absolutely. by biology. So curating who your family is and then yeah. curating who your friends are. And then the other Absolutely. piece is being in alignment with serving from your intersection of your brilliance and your passion. You know, I've had people come through uh, wanting to be clients of ours and they checked off all the boxes. If you were to pull up the avatar, I, I mean, they check off all the boxes, but something about it is just telling me that I like them as a friend. I think they're amazing. I want them to be successful, but I just know I'm not the person to do it. And um, it's easier for me to uh, find, you know, refer or attempt to refer them somewhere else. Sure. or to give them some resources to help them along their way. It's just I can see the writing on the wall as clearly as anybody who can see through my eyes, and it's just not destined to be. And I think that's where a lot of businesses struggle. Like you and I, I think we discover we have in common, the first 10 years or so, we dramatically undercharged for what we did. And uh, it was a combination. I, I have a feeling I might be reading at least a segment of a page from your diary, needing to pay the bills, needing to establish your authority level credibility for what you Absolutely. do and needing to build a body of work. And I bet you there might have been a piece of it where these were referrals. And if you turn down somebody's referrals, it would turn into an argument. Absolutely. Uh -huh. That's yeah. that's all true. And I mean, I, yeah. you know, I, I, I've had the freedom. I, I'm now at the point in my career where I have the freedom now to turn down clients. And yeah. uh, I, I should have done that much earlier, 
re- like you're saying, regardless of where I was financially. But now I, I, I am at that point where, you know, if somebody's, uh, if, if somebody's passion, if somebody's love of, of life, of people does not align with mine, I can just say, hey, that, yeah, this might not be a great relationship, you know, and yeah. that's okay. That's okay. I've ne- I, yeah, I've never had anybody get upset over that. And yeah, and you know, and you know, one other thing before we move on to our final question here is, oh, in entrepreneurial coaching and in cash flow management, we sometimes hear that if you need money in a hurry, uh, find something you can get paid for, even if you don't enjoy doing it, because then you'll <laughs> have the money to fund what you want to. Now, I've tried that five or six times. And I've ended up where I ended up undercharging for whatever it was. Funny how that works. And it actually set me steps back. So my thinking is, you know what? If you're going to have to hustle and grind to get a client in the door anyway, might as well hustle and grind to get a client in the door to do the things you want to do. Absolutely. You're still going to have to put in that urgent work to get that emergency cash injection. Why not take a step forward? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. All right. So So true. All right, so uh, we're at the point now where uh, we're about to wrap up here. You have a gift for our audience, and I'm going to share that with them for you. But in general, when as we wrap up here, and we're going to be done in about a minute, what is one action that you would urge our listeners to take as soon as they finish in be- listening to us today, which is going to be in about a minute? Oh, guys, you got to find your bliss. Uh, mm-hmm. Success is amazing, but it's really not going to make you happy long term. Uh, you, you got to find a way to make the world that better place. Um, I'm taking it wildly out of context, but Carl Sagan, we are made of star stuff. You know, that just valuing life in that way that we are so amazing. We're made of star stuff. Um, I, I, if we had like 10 minutes, I would read this whole poem to you by Mary Oliver. Yeah. But the last line of it, Mary Oliver says, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life I'm like oh. <laughs> you know yep. it's that's that's what you got to find your bliss you know this is not uh I, I i'm i'm of the persuasion where we have one life you know we get to figure out what we're going to do with this one yep. life with the, as she said your one wild and precious life exactly Let's do it Let's do it. You, yeah. you, know? you, and I, you and I follow each other on social media, so you've probably heard me say at least a dozen times that even if you believe in reincarnation, you only get to do this one one time. That's right. Yeah. Yes. All right. So for those of you who are out walking, driving, or streaming in the background, I'm going to read this out loud. For everybody else, go to our website and look in the show notes. The website is www.harkencreative. That's H-E-A-R-K-E-N creative.com forward slash three hyphen step hyphen marketing hyphen reboots. So www.harkencreative.com forward slash three step marketing reboot with a hyphen between each of those words after the forward slash. And what you're going to get is a fantastic resource that you can claim right now. All you have to do is pop in your email address and you'll get this quick three-step marketing reboot. I'm going to try it out for myself. And the reason I say that is folks may look at me and say, hey, you have multiple podcasts. You have the podcast reach this Aren't you kind of, and you're, and you're happy with what you're doing and you're doing well with it. Why would you want a marketing reboot? Here's the thing. Never turn away great information because within that thing that may seem on the surface, like it's something you may not need right this minute, you may find exactly what you need. Think about the prospectors who went out to California during the gold rush and how much they went through to find those nuggets of gold. And when they found them, how wealthy and rich they became. So go take that marketing reboot. All of us do it now. All right. So with that, Lauren Roberts, thank you so much for being with us today. It's been an honor and believe me in education. Thank you so much, Adam. It's been great talking with you. Thank you for tuning into the Brilliance Plus Passion podcast, where we celebrate entrepreneurs, business creators, and brilliant minds who are making a difference for their community, market, and audience. Remember to visit our website at www.brilliancepluspassion.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time 
time on the Brilliance Plus Passion podcast. Thank you.